Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Today I have a beautiful pieced quilt for you. This is called Chateau Rouge and this was designed by Moda Fabrics. And this was when the Chateau Rouge collection was current. I fell in love with the pattern and when the Cinnaberry collection came out, I said, let's make those two meet and you're seeing the quilt behind me. So thank you Moda for allowing us to share that pattern. It's available as a free download on our website. You can go to the very bottom of our website and this link that says free downloads, click there. You're looking for the Chateau Rouge pattern. We of course have kits available or you might choose to use your own fabrics. The quilt goes together very simply. And let me show you what you would do to put this project together. The red blocks are pieced out of five strips. The cream blocks are just a solid. So let's jump right into cutting those strips. They're two inch strips. You'll need five for each of the red pieced triangles. I love using the Creator Grids two and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler because it's got the black dots for the fractional increments, white dots for the whole numbers. Since we'll be cutting two inch strips, I'm just looking at that number two, laying it right alongside the edge of my fabric and giving a cut. And I love that. The ruler has the nice gripper on the back side. It's not going to shift in my hands while I'm making the cut. So you'll just continue cutting all of your red strips. And um, of course, you're going to want to mix those up so you have a nice variety of your blocks. And you'll basically be making uh, these strip units. Let me show you what that's going to look like. The pattern has you having the first three strips stacked right on top of each other, and then the bottom two staggered off to the left slightly. And I thought that was quite clever because when you use the ruler, you have less waste. And I'll show you what I'm referring to. Um, we found the beautiful Clearview ruler here. It fits this project like it was made for it. The tip of the ruler goes to the very top of your strip unit and the very bottom goes to the bottom. As you can see from the original pattern, they used a larger ruler and had to find that spot on the ruler. It's the eight inch line, whereas this is an eight inch ruler and it fits perfectly. Again, if you place the ruler on top of your strip set and it doesn't match up, something's gone awry. Maybe the cutting was not quite right or maybe the piecing was too narrow or too wide of a quarter of an inch for you. Or it could be even impressing. Maybe if you kind of press things a little bit more open, it's going to fit it the way that it should. Okay, I'm going to bring out my spinning mat because we are going to go ahead and be cutting on both sides of our triangle. Of course, you would be piecing with the fabric. I have a much shorter strip unit just so that, I, because I have limited space here. So now that we're all, the ruler's where it needs to be, I'll make that first cut and put that aside. I'm just gonna rotate my mat and I'll make my next cut. There's my first piece. And I will continue Flipping my ruler around, it really kind of, it's an equal ruler, so you kind of can't really do it wrong. And we'll just keep cutting, and you will just keep cutting. See how that would work? You just, you just are able to maximize, and you keep cutting, and you keep cutting, and you maximize how many of the pieced triangle units you can get out of that. Out of the, the solid, you'll repeat that process and you'll just get plain cream uh, triangles, again, using the same ruler. So let's put that aside for now. As you can see here, you have the way that we pieced our units. In fact, I'll just hold that up so you can see. We chose the long side here, and you can see how we did that same thing uh, with each of the piece units. You could have them straight up if you wanted that. You could have it where they're like this. You decide what you want. If you want to mimic what we have here, that's how we have uh, laid out the pattern. And that's how I'll show you our piece unit. So let's, it's good to have a visual. So let's have that as our visual target, okay? 
So if we want to mimic that, we would have a long side here, and we would have those coming in there. See that? It's not wrong if you did it like that. It just is a different look. So you can decide how you like that. We'll go ahead and go right side together. I'm just going to put a quick pin in the front and the back, the beginning and the end, and let's go sew that. This quilt's going to come together very quickly. This is on bias now. Be careful you don't push or pull. You don't want to distort anything. I have a starter strip in because the tip of this might want to dive into uh, my machine. I like having a starter strip to help alleviate that tendency. Okay, let's see what we have here. Consequently, we went ahead and pressed the back of that open. So we will follow suit. Let's see here, we have a nice hot iron. I'm going to be very gentle with my pressing so I don't distort things because we don't want to ever do this, especially when we have bias involved. And I'll open that seam up. First with just my fingers. And then I like to go back and kind of just fish it along there. You can see I kind of just wiggle and it tends to just open that seam. Let's press from this side. Make sure we didn't take a tuck in that. Okay. So this is where we are right here. Sometimes you might be uh, tempted to trim off that little dog ear. Right now, it's your friend because watch what happens. When I go right side with this piece, notice how that little dog ear down here, my piece sits right on top of it. It helps confirm my alignment is right on the mark. I like that. Those types of things that help me know that everything is lined up as it should be are just, they're comforting. They, they make me know that I do have that piece laying precisely on top of the other one, and I'm more likely to have success with the block coming out like I want it to. So let's go sew that again. These are my Kai scissors. Those are my go-to scissors. My gosh, I don't think I really use any other scissors anymore. <laughs> They're sharp and they fit in your hand so nicely. Okay, same thing. Warm up that seam. I'm gonna get in there with my fingers, opening that up. And then I'll come back along with the iron, kind of just fishing that along and pressing that open. Okay, let's look and see how we did. There we go. And we just keep going. You keep adding your next triangle, right? And you just keep going. And you piece again, and you can piece again. Being mindful that, okay, we know on this side, we wanna have that long edge. Um, and if you don't like that pattern, maybe grab a different block so that you don't have two of the same fabric. Maybe I'll put that there. And you continue to do that with each of your rows. And of course, then you're going to, to piece all of the rows together. There's one thing I did want to show you that may seem awkward to you, but is completely normal for this pattern, is notice how you will have the, like this could be the very edge of the quilt and it's gonna not seem natural, but you will go in and trim that, making sure that you allow for the quarter inch seam allowance that you'll need when you sew the binding on. That's all there is to making this quilt. Doesn't it look amazing? We also noticed that the quilt can either hang like this 
where the wider part of the triangle is at the bottom, or you could flip it around and it looks just as beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this beautiful quilt. If you have not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that now and that way you'll be the first to know about any new projects that we have available for you here at Shabby Fabrics. I'll see you next time.